there guys, Erica here from High 49 rc Now that the Traxxas Splash has moved into the upgrade and uh, modify phase, it, the main build of it is done, uh, it's time to start a new project. And if you guys remember, about a year ago, I picked a pair, picked up a pair of these bad boys, which are uh, Deluxe Fab Super Light MOA Axles. I've been dreaming of an MOA crawler, of building one, since I learned what the heck an XR10 was way back in probably 7th grade. And I'm a year out of high school now, so that's a long time. It's taken me a while to get to this project just because of some life stuff, and then also the chassis that I have designed is just, it's gonna be sweet, I think. It took me a while to design. I'll show you on the computer here in a few minutes. Uh, before that, let's take a quick look at some of the other parts that I'm gonna be using in this build. For power, I've got two Mamba Micro X's. I've used these in my touring car. I actually really like them. Really small footprint. They run a brushed motor just fine. They run cool. Um, and small footprint means lightweight. And for an MOA, you want the least sprung weight you can have. For motors, I got two Holmes Hobbies Team Puller 500 motors. They're 16 turn. They are five slot armatures and have neodymium magnets in them. These things were quite expensive, but these are like the strongest motors that I think Holmes makes um, that are brushed. So man, these are going to be absolutely gnarly. For a servo, I picked up a high tech 7980th Monster Torque servo. They don't make these anymore, so I was really lucky to find one on eBay. Um, this is kind of a staple, I feel like, of the MOA and like sporty comp crawler world. Um, I remember watching videos when I was younger of like Ted's Garage um, and DJ Medic like crawling there and a lot of the rigs had like these servos with the, the like little fins cut in them. So for me that feels like a staple of an MOA and I really wanted to include that in this build. Last but not least for a radio system I'm going to be running a Futaba 8J. Um, also, they don't make this anymore, but I wanted eight channels. Um, I don't remember why, but I liked the way that this one was set up, just with all the switches and such, over, I think, the 10J I was debating between as well. So the plan is, basically, we're going to be able to control the front and rear individually, so we can have front dig or rear dig, we can underdrive the rear or underdrive the front, whatever we need to do. I'm not going to be doing four-wheel steering on this build because I already have my shafty and that's got four-wheel steering on it, so I don't feel like I need two four-wheel steering rigs. Um, but yeah, with that, I am really pumped. Let's get over to the computer and take a look at the chassis I've designed. Before we take a look at the chassis that I designed, let's take a look at my inspiration. So I was Googling around on the internet for super crawler, like, um, chassis designs, right? And I saw a lot of like really similar designs and I wasn't, I didn't really want to make a rig like everybody else's. I stumbled across this Dravtech chassis, which they called the Super Sudo chassis. Um, it was released, looks like in 2015, based on the uh, timestamps on the photos. But as you can see, it's really long, pretty, pretty narrow, um, very like low profile as well. Um, and that really drew me to it. I didn't add in all the like uh, diagonal cross bracing and stuff, but now that we've taken a look at that, this is my chassis. So I'm in Fusion 360, which is what I use for all my 3D modeling. I I did my wheels in it. I did my shafty chassis in it. Uh, basically anything that I 3D model, I use Fusion. Um, it's relatively easy to use, and it's a pretty powerful software. I would have to admit. So. It's a four-piece chassis design. I've got the two inner rails and the two outer just like fancy pieces with a bunch of cross bracing in the middle, which is just going to be the like aluminum stock that I use when I make my links. It's basically like these guys in the middle. Those are just going to be threaded links. These little guys out on the side, though, those are going to be spacers. So the screw will go through like from the outside all the way through into the link in the center. That's the plan at least. Um, the skid plate, this was my original rendition of it, but I didn't really like the way that, look from the top, like I didn't like the way that this stuck out so much. Um, Cause like when you're looking at it this way and you're thinking like, okay, if there's a rock coming up 
right here, like this is gonna hit that first. So I wasn't really a big fan of that, whoa. <laughs> so as you can see with my final design, I've got an angle there so that that'll like kind of like a little bit of like a skid play rock slide kind of thing, you know? Um, angled link mounts and the little notches in the corner there so that I can actually like drill a, um, a hole like straight all the way through and not have it be on an angle. Cause like drilling like this doesn't work. But if I drill like that, that will work. Basically what I did there. If you follow me on my Discord server, you will have seen um, a lot of in progress photos and screenshots of me working on this chassis. Um, so if you're not in my Discord, definitely go check that out. Um, Cause this is the kind of stuff that you'll be seeing before it gets uploaded on YouTube. And I was posting pictures of this like months ago. So I'd highly recommend it. Um, in terms of tool paths, um, let's see, here we go. First one is drill all the holes. The orange lines are basically the path that the cutter is going to take around the part. Um, these little guys in the middle are just hold downs because when I machine out the next part, these guys are gonna be floating in the middle and I don't want that because if it like as soon as they release from the rest of the stock it has the potential to get sucked into the cutter caught break the cutter bad basically so I've just got two holes in each part three in these larger ones just for the safety that I can make sure that they don't go anywhere um, these little gaps here on the sides those are tabs so that's the actual, our actual part um, will be held in place. I could do tabs on these center bits. I don't remember why I didn't, but there's a good reason for it, I assure you. <laughs> and then last is the chamfer around the edge. So this little blue line right there, that's this chamfer basically, and that's what it's gonna cut. So here's a quick simulation of basically what the machine's gonna do. So it's drilling all the holes right now, and then it's taking out the insides and then it'll go through and do the outside um, contour. And lastly, it'll go around and do the chamfers. So as you can see here, these are the tabs that I was talking about. These are gonna hold our chassis plates in place in the stock so they don't go flying out, cause that's not good. Anyway, I think you guys get the idea. It's a pretty sweet chassis. I'm looking forward to putting it together and building it. With that, let's head out in the garage. I've got a piece of wood uh, fixtured up to the table so we can do a test run of this because, you know, you can't be too proud. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right, I'm out in the shop now. Um, got my piece of wood mocked up or like clamped down so we can give it a test. I got all my uh, programs in the machine looking hopefully ready to go. Um, yeah, let's take a look. Basically a piece of half inch ply uh, clamped down about an inch um, above the table on one, two, three blocks because uh, a half inch is not enough like safety for me to feel comfortable running a test because um, I want a little bit extra space between the tool and the table in case something happens and I need to make an adjustment because I don't want to crash the machine. Got my first tool in there. Uh, I just got to zero it out and then away we go. Test to program one was a success. What I've circled are the pieces of floating waste stock that need to be held down, basically so that I just know where they are because amongst a grid of holes, like it's kind of hard to tell. So I just circled them for myself to make it easier. Tool two is in the machine. Program two is loaded on the computer. Let's go ahead and cut the outer contour. And that is why we do test runs because it was not supposed to do that. All right, here is the problem. I had that one active, that 1A front side one, which is actually from uh, my wheels, and I needed to have that one active, so. Yay, nothing wrong with the program itself, yet. <laughs>
everything ran smoothly. You can see the tabs in there and the waist stock that I circled. I think it'll be pretty good. Now that that is done, um, I just need to come up with a fixture for my like actual stock that I'm going to use because I don't know. It's a lot of space between the clamping points, right? So that's going to mean a lot of this nonsense is happening. We do have, my dad got a piece of plastic over here that he's already cut out some chassis on. Now, my problem with this is that uh, while it is warped, so when I bolt it down, it will, like, compress flat to the table. But my issue with it is, is that it covers up all the T-slots which I am a big fan of T-slots because it just feels better than screws, right? So I don't know. I'll figure something out. Right, I decided to use the big piece of plastic. Um, I actually came up with a, I think, pretty good setup. Come take a look. This piece of wood here is was my test. Got two holes drilled in it because I put um, bolts and T-nuts through the big sheet of plastic. Um, holding the aluminum down which <sighs> this bridges the gap between using um, like fixturing blocks and such with t-nuts and bolts and screws it bridges that gap because I've still got two screws in each corner just to keep the corner chatter down because from here to here it's a lot of flex um, down here there will be um, these guys so scrap screw hold downs um, that's actually not gonna, well, it might help, it might help, because I might put screws in there as well, but I think it should be pretty good. Um, like I mentioned, the plastic was bowed this way, so when I bolt it down on either end, it, like, squishes it flat, which is good, and the aluminum was also, uh, inverse like this, so it got squished flat as well, so I think, I think, I think, this is gonna be pretty good. I got the drill bit in there. I'm ready for the first uh, program, so wish me luck. Whew. I damn near made a big oopsie. So I put these bolts on top of the stock, right? Not considering that they might be in the middle of where the tool comes up and traverses somewhere else. I stopped the uh, drill bit like a quarter inch away from this nut that was right here. It's like a quarter inch away. I'm so glad that I caught that. I halted it so that I was able to just take this out and resume the program. Um, but that is a good lesson right there. <laughs> Very good lesson. So I'm going to go back inside. I'm going to take measurements of exactly where those bolts are and like the diameters and how tall and such. Um, and I'm going to see if my other programs conflict with that because if they do, I might just put screws in it. Okay, I, I might just put screws in it. Thought I was being smart. <laughs> okay guys, real quick, check this out. I put the circles in where the bolts are. The orange lines are my tool path. So basically that's the path that my tool is traveling. You see this? You see that? I stopped that cutter right there. So, looking at this though, the rest of them are good. Nothing else is going to interfere from what I can tell. Uh, let me just turn that one off. These are all the rest of the tool pads and the orange lines are the big moves. I don't see anything else conflicting, so I'd say we're good to go to keep on uh, machining. And if I ever cut this chassis again to remember that.
That's all she wrote, boys. I'm hungry. I have done some cleaning up, as you can see. It is much later in the day now. I have had a snack. I am good to go, and woo-hoo-hoo! <whistles> Look at those bad boys. Come on, focus. Man, that was a terrible segue. Thanks, autofocus. Anyway, uh, these things turned out fantastic. Um, I am very, very pleased. I now have to cut them out of the parent stock. Shouldn't be too bad. In the past, I have done it with a pair of side cutters, like some really heavy-duty ones. Um, and I've used a Dremel, so we'll see which one works this time. Um, after that, we'll just take to the belt grinder, take care of those burrs and edges and all that jazz, and then the panels will be done. From there then, um, I don't know if I'm going to get to it today, maybe. Um, we need to make the links and the spacers to uh, get those plates all like sandwiched together. Um, we'll see how I'm feeling though, because up to this point everything in this video has been filmed in one day. Which feels really, really good to me because I haven't been able to do work like this just because of my head for a long time. And this feels awesome, so yeah.